Good evening. Welcome to ASAL Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious and boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of heavens and earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We are expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to leave this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily direction and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise, the blessing of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instructions, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ, encourage those who do not know him personally, and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at ASAL Community Church, where serving and giving begins.
it's time for the Lord's Supper. And the Lord's Supper memorializes the atoning death of Jesus Christ. It is a celebration, a thanksgiving for Christ's gift to us. This is a moment to examine your worship, your relationship with Christ, and your relationship with your fellow man. Before communion, we should take a, a moment and reflect on the relationships in our lives. The word says, I appeal to you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we praise thee for the gift of thy son Jesus Christ who died upon the cross. We do not come, we do not come seeking perfection, but we come asking you, Father God, to alter and correct things in our lives that are not pleasing in your sight. We come to thy table trusting in your, your righteousness trusting in your mercy and your grace we ask you father to forgive our transgressions cleanse our hearts and put a new spirit within us make us aware of the presence of you of your son dying for us bless us now as we go forward in jesus name amen in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 and 24 it reads for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me let us eat together In that same chapter, verses 25 and 26 says, In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink together. Amen.
tricked y'all. Live through. But I'm still here. I don't know about you, but I am so thankful to still be here. That I still have time to get it right. I, I still have time to help somebody along the way. Life is, life is precious. Life is precious. And I, I think we all should take advantage of every moment that we have. Uh, I was getting ready to, um, you know, get ready for this evening service. And I got a phone call that blessed my heart. Uh, somebody just called and just wanted to pray for me. And, and, and that means a lot that, that, that people are, are listening and hearing and, 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 and whatever the Holy Spirit leads you, he will not lead you astray. And then when I got to the church, my other friend <laughs> told me about my rant on Facebook. And I want you to know that if it rants, whatever comes out I just feel this unction to to share it that's it I just feel this unction to share it and and I will never reply to it I don't reply whether people like it or they don't I don't I don't reply because I didn't put it on for the response I put it on because of something that was on the inside and that's the beautiful thing about serving when you are in tune with serving you hear and all you have to do is respond to what you hear and I, and I think that's, that, that, that's, that's what's missing in our society is responding to, to what you hear as, as a representation of Christ. Father God, we're so thankful for this evening, thankful for those who are here, thankful for the members, thankful for the friends, thankful for those who are watching online, because we are living in a trying time. We are living in a trying time, and we have to connect to you to be able to persevere and be able to move without fear. Because we know that you are in control of everything. And so we're thankful, Father, to still be in Atlanta living, thankful for health and strength and thankful for the articulation of our, of our voice and our understanding of our mind, thankful to be able to move our limbs. Father, we ask that you would just shine down on us right now and allow this worship service to, to go in a direction that's pleasing to you, that the word meditates and manifests in the hearts of the people, of the people that hear it, that they not only be hearers, but be doers of the word. So bless now, Father, as we go forward. Bless as we go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, tonight we kind of return to our roots. This is how we got started, but the Lord's will. Next week our musicians will be back as we celebrate our four-year anniversary. Our four years as God has blessed us to be here on, on this corner. I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I tell you that God is doing some things where he can take a group of people and transform a community based upon a few. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes people on one accord, one mind, one heart, serving a true and living God to make a difference. And I'm so thankful for ASAR Community Church because I want to make sure that we have a representation in the community. I, I believe that we should impact the community, but we should start from within and work our way out. And if we do that, God will be pleased, people will be blessed, and we will all rejoice in the work that we are doing that we have been assigned to do. I believe that no matter what happens in life, that you have to have a word because the word is what sustains you. The word is what brings you through. I love a good song because I'm still here. I, I love a good song, but I love the word because when I find myself in perilous times, the word will help me navigate through. That's what the word does. But, but you got to know it for yourself. You got you to connect to it yourself and you have to trust it yourself. I, I can only give you the information, but you have to apply the information, connect to the information, let it resonate within you and then share it with somebody else. That, that's how we change. That's how we change. And so over the last six weeks, tonight is the conclusion of giving. I pray that one of the six messages has blessed you. I pray that you understand why you give, who you should give to, why you should give to 
wherever you give, you should, you should by now have a, a solid foundation on, on giving and an understanding. And understand that the giving blesses you first. And then it allows the ministry to operate. And so uh, I, I was in 2 Corinthians and then I jumped around through some Proverbs. And tonight I just want to show giving from another perspective from the Old Testament. Because we get into this debate as to tithing and not tithing. And, and I'm just asking you, I'm asking members and friends of Asia, do me a favor. Spend some time removing titles and see where you are. Just, just stop, stop doing things predicated on the title like you're supposed to respond a certain way because of the title. Just respond as a representative of God. And so I wanted to, to share from the Old Testament something else about giving from another perspective. And, and I pray that tonight's message puts a, a, a seal on giving for you. And then when somebody asks you, you can explain to them or share to them who you are when it comes to giving, where it comes from, what it should be used for. And if you can't answer those questions now, please email me, text me, and it will be the first Bible study next week. But I pray that the last six messages has blessed you. Tonight we're going to be coming from 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Amen. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 18. 1 Chronicles chapter 29 verses 1 through 18. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. 1 Chronicles 29. Verses 1 through 18, and it reads, Furthermore, King David said to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great because the temple is not for man, but for God. Church is not for man, but for God. This sanctuary is for God, for man to worship in the sanctuary. Now, for the house of my God, I have prepared with all my might gold for things to be made of gold, silver for things of silver, bronze for things of bronze, iron for things of iron, wood for things of wood, onyx stones, stones to be set, glistening stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones and marble slabs in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, King David here personalizes this. He says, set my affection on the house of my God. I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. My own special treasure of gold and silver. This is the king. Verse 4. 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of um, Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses. The gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of craftsmen. Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? Then the leaders, catch that. Then the leaders of the father's houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captain of thousands and of hundreds with the officers over the king's work offered willingly. They gave for the work of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 darics of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave, you got to pay attention to this right here, it says whoever whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of Jahil, their, uh, I can't pronounce that, 
but somebody germicite or ger what is it yeah okay all of y'all are wrong but that's good keep going <laughs> it's one of them then the people rejoice for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord and King David also rejoiced greatly Therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly, and David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. Both riches and honor come from you. And you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand is to make great and to give strength to all. Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you. And of your own have we given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were all of our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. O Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is given, is from your hand, and is all your own. I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now, with joy, I have seen your people who are present here to offer willingly to you. Verse 18 says, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of the heart of your people and fix their heart towards you. My sermon title is Leading by Example. Leading by Example. 18 verses to get to the point of giving. 18 verses and we're going to we're going to uh, uh, center tonight's message on verses 16, 17, and 18. But let's go back and look at the first 15 verses and see what, what, is, what is transpiring. Well, King David is building the temple to his God. And the work is great and requires great resources. And what we should do is present to God excellence. In everything that we do, we should be trying our best to present excellent. It's no need in the world seeing us if we're not in an excellent state. And so he's going to build this temple for God, but the glory goes to God. The glory goes to He's not building it for himself. He's building it because he loved the Lord. And when you love something... You give to support it. When, you, when something you love, that's, that's where you spend your, as they say, wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure is. So if you just kind of open up your own checkbook and see where your resources are going or have gone, it will tell you what you love. And when you have love for something, you have no problem in spending all that you have. How do you know? Look in some closets and you'll see hundreds and pairs of shoes and coats and shirts and, and belts. That's a person that loves their wardrobe. But David was the king. And in verse 3 he said, house of my God that makes it personal. And he gave over and above because he wanted to do what? Please God. He didn't give over and above so that people would, 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 would try to trump him. He gave based upon his love for God as we ought to do. Give based upon our love for God. And in verse 5, he, he challenged the people who will follow his example. And so what he does in verse 5 is he creates an opportunity to give. 
But he never tells them what and how much. He just creates the opportunity to say, we are building this for the glory of God and you can participate. And as the leader, I've already established that I, I've gathered resources and I've given my own above and beyond. So giving comes back down to what's in your heart. Not what you have been forced to do, not what somebody has set up for you to do, but based upon hearing and deciding for yourself, what is it that I want to contribute to this ministry? We give here because of the love of the Lord. That's, that's why we give here. That's why we give here. That's, that's the only way to give here. It has to be your affection for what God is doing and has done in your life and what we as a church, what we as a ministry are trying to do to impact the community. That's what you're sowing into. But remember, as we said earlier, when you sow, there's a reap. But when we do this, we give into honor God and for the ministry to go forth. That's, that's why we give. But because the leaders gave freely for the purpose of pleasing God to build the temple, the leaders of those families, the leaders of the tribes, the generals, the captains, the army, the administration, they all gave willingly. It is not our, no, no, take it back, let me go. It is not my position to force anybody to do anything. It's not my position. My position is to teach straightly, strictly from the word of God. What does it say? What we should do? And you hearing it have to trust and believe in it for yourself. Because it should line up in the pages of the same Bible I'm getting the information from. So as David is telling the people what we are about to do. And he's already been the example because he's given above and beyond. And he's already collected resources. The people under his leadership willingly gave. People find it easier to give when they understand what and why. You know when people also will give freely? When they see that the leadership is doing the same thing. When they, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to follow someone when, when it seems like they're always putting the pressure on you. But when you open up their account, you see no accountability. And, and that's just not a good place to be. I, I, I wouldn't want to be a leader telling people, this is what you ought to do, but, but, but I'm not doing it. We all grew up in a time where people say, do as I say, not as I do. Well, what kind of nonsense is that? I'm, I'm emulating what I see, and if you're doing it, I'm going to do it. And if it ain't good, then why are you doing it? In verse 9, the people rejoice. And the reason why they rejoice is because they offered willingly. That, that, that makes you rejoice when you see it all come together, when you, when you realize that we are moving as a unit on one accord, that, that our hearts are in sync, that, the, that we're moving as a sync, in sync unit. People rejoice because there is no chaos. See, see, the reason why chaos happens is because leadership injects it. That's where it comes from. It comes from, look, 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 I've been a part of places where they, they pitted side against side and, and this side gave this much and, and this side is trying to, it's not coming from your heart, it's coming from some pressure for your side or your organization to do more than, but it's not in here. Here's the king, David, he set the example for the people and said, listen, this is what we're trying to do, this is what I've done, and I'm now saying whatever you give, some gave talents, some gave stones, but whatever they gave, they gave from their heart they gave willingly that's what we got to understand about giving it, it has to be willing and it, it, listen if it ain't in your heart don't don't do it if it ain't in your heart if, if you don't understand don't do it if you got a question don't do it wait because when you do it from your heart when you do it willingly you will rejoice and others will be blessed because of your willingness to share. 
In the same chapter, verses 10 and 10 through 15, is, is David's praise to God. That's what that was. That was, that was, his, that was a praise report. And David expresses his thanks. You know what? That's one of the problems we have. People forget to say thank you. And as a pastor of a church, I know firsthand people don't say thank you. And if I responded to every thank you or, or thank you we did not receive, we could not do ministry. Because you would, inside there's a problem because I was raised and when somebody did something for you, you say thank you. And sometimes these, these children forget to say thank you and it's almost like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm very sensitive to thank you. But I have to be cognizant of the fact that Jesus healed the ten lepers and only one came back to say thank you. So, but he still did ministry. And if we're still going to do ministry, although I would appreciate the thank you, meaning you recognize that you didn't have to do it, but you did. That's all thank you means. I got to still keep moving forward. So that's, what, that's what's going on in verses 10 through 15. It's just, it's just the, the, uh, uh, David expressing thanks for the privilege of giving. You, you got to understand that when you give, it's a privilege. When you give, it's a privilege because God allowed you to be in the position to give. How do you know? Because you ain't asking. That, that, that's how you know because you, you're not asking because there's some, some people asking and I, I, talked to, I talked to Pastor BJ yesterday and I shared this with him and he said I, I wholeheartedly agree. This is what we were talking about. I, I said I, I'm having a hard time with these, this pantry just giving people food without giving them the tools to fish. And I believe that if some of these people on the corner get some of that money that they get, and I, I, I don't know what they need it for, I, I don't know. But I truly believe if the, if, the, if the word of God is true, and if we're trusting it, if somebody taught them, listen, even though you're out here asking for, for, for donations, you've got to begin for yourself to sow some of those donations to reap that harvest that we are reaping. How do you know we are reaping the harvest? Because we're in the position to give. Oh, but they are struggling and they will continue to struggle until somebody tells them the truth. Open up the book. How come you're not struggling? Because you understand the principles of giving. It's a willingness. It comes from the heart. And you understand that God takes it and is pleased because he gave it to you in the first place. Well, they're not ready for that. Well, it, well, come over here and keep asking and see what happened on that second time. Listen, all of us can be in a situation of need. Do not get me wrong. All of us can be in, in a situation of need. But the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he said that if you sow, you, your needs will be met. And because you're sowing in ministry, I'll make sure that you have an abundance to help. So the ability and the heart to give a gift from God. No one should have to entice you to give. Nobody should entice you to give. No one, God, I, 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 just, haven't, I, I, I just haven't found where there's a, a certain dollar amount as the mandate to give. Even tithing. Tithing means nothing more than a tenth of. So if I make $100,000, you make $50,000, as long as you're giving a tenth of that, you're a tither, that, that's all it is. But it doesn't say that you're supposed to give $10,000 or $5,000 or $2,000 or, or 10 people need to get in line that can sow $1,000 and five. It's not in there. That got to be man because it's not in the word. So that brings us down to verses 16, 17, and 18. Because again, because again, leading by example, David led by example. And because of his example, the people follow, but they didn't follow David because he was the king. They followed him because he was a man of God with principle and integrity. And he was doing something that was for the Lord and it was pleasing to the Lord. And the people responded to that. He wasn't building a house for himself with all they came in for the Lord now, now don't get me wrong if you if you again I'm telling y'all right now if you have the salary to build a house with gold fixtures God bless you 
But if you're taking money from people that's supposed to go in the ministry, there's a problem. But whatever your income bracket is and your credit score will allow, or whatever it is you have, I have no problem whatsoever. But do not lead people astray thinking that what they're sowing into, you're not doing. That, that's a problem. And so David was clear as to what the, the sowing in was for. And he contributed his own above and beyond. So let's look at verse 16. It says, O Lord, O Lord, our God, we recognize who he is, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your... Listen, folks. What we have, just because it's in your bank account with your name on it, this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is really just yours. It's, it's, it's all yours anyway. We're just being good stewards. We're just, because we love you, want to, want to build this in, in, in honor of you to be a blessing to others. This, this church, when people come into this church and they say how well it is, it is because of all of the hearts being knitted together that allows this church on this corner to have excellence. Every donation that ever came in is a part of all of this. And if you have sent, spent one penny here, you were part of this. And you should rejoice because we're just trying to move in excellence. And so it's all here. It's this, this abundance that, look, look, we're just gathering it here to do the work. We're just gathering it here to do the assignment. For who? For the Lord. For the Lord. That, that, that's, that, that's, that's, you know that's what church is, right? That's why we show up here. That's what we are supposed to do here. It ain't, as they used to say back in my day, it ain't for form or fashion. It is to do what? To be rejuvenated, to be of like mind, to learn, to grow, to do what? To move forward in ministry, to be able to share, to be able to take this message and tell somebody else. And you know what else this message is supposed to do? Or messages are supposed to do? It's supposed to allow you that when you hear something, you can go, where y'all get that from? Or, or, or be in a situation and you see some things and go, you know, that ain't even of God. And people go, how do you know that's not of God? Because it ain't, because God, look, the word don't say that. Where does it say it in the word? Well, let, let me tell you where it says in the word. Now you can flip to it and show them. This is what it says. What does that say right here? It said he gave willingly. His officers gave willingly. His generals gave willingly. These were people in position who had titles that people emulated and looked up to based upon the title. And if the leaders can give willingly, what do you think the people are going to do? So it says... Oh Lord, our God, all of this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own anyway. <laughs> so let's look down at verse 17. It says in verse 17, I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I am willingly offering all these things. And now, with joy, I have seen your people who are present here to offer willingly. Do you know that the greatest satisfaction you can ever get in leadership is when people respond to the instructions that you know is going to be a blessing to their life? That is the greatest thing. I, I, I've never been a teacher, like a, a school teacher, but I, I have to imagine that some teachers, when they see certain students that they taught, that they knew, and they see them years later, it has to be a, a great joy, a, 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 a reason to rejoice when you know that you had some influence and you have impacted and you have touched that child and that child goes on to greater heights and then turns around and says, I thank God for and, 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 you, and listen, that, that's all this is. My God tests the heart. Don't you know that right now, that during the pandemic, 
for, for, for two years, it was some people that was just prospering for two years and God was just doing some amazing things because when it looked bleak and it should have been bleak, people were excelling and now we should be excelling and for some people it looked bleak and their trust is starting to waver because the, 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 the two years of bliss has now come up to a season of drought. But it ain't a drought. It's a test. And you got to figure out the test. Are you going to continue to respond the way you responded when it was plentiful? Or are you going to go back and revert to let me figure this thing out myself? You can't figure this thing out when God has an abundance. We have an unlimited amount, but he has an abundant amount. We don't have what God has, so we should trust him. Even when it looks bad, you should trust him. Because all of a sudden, that's where the blessing comes. Because you're, you're trust. So he says, my God, that you trust, that you test the heart and have pleasure. You know what the pleasure is? In your trusting of him. This is nothing more than a test. And what are you going to do? Are you going to pass the test or are you going to revert back to doing what you do? And what's the first thing you do when, when it gets tight? You pull back. You go, I'm a, it's tight right now. I'm going to wait. You can't wait. Our giving should be willing. Our giving should be willing. Why should it be willing? Because it all belongs to him. All you're doing is giving him back a portion of what he's already blessed you and allowed you to have. So why would you hold back on him when he's the one who gave it to you in the first place? What you need to do if you're going to hold back on somebody, hold back on some of them other jokers. And really, to be honest with you, the only reason you in trouble is because some of the stuff you wanted. You didn't need, but you wanted it. And you, you, you had no problem. I remember when I first met my wife, she had about $6,000 in debt. She had a credit card, it was about $6,000. And I remember she had gotten some money and I said, baby, just go ahead and pay it off. Pay the whole thing off, just pay it off and you'll be done with it. And, and you, I'm, I'm not lying, she goes, she'll tell you after the service. Her hand trembled as she began to write that check. And she asked me this question. She said, why I gotta give them all of it? I said, look, you didn't have no problem accumulating all of it. You, you didn't, you not one time, no, not one person's ever taken a credit card and go, I don't know, let me, mm, no, you whipped that bad boy out so fast, wham! But then when it comes to paying it back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, give, a couple, I'm gonna give a couple dollars past the minimum. What, 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 what do you mean? You, 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 you had no problem charging it. You should have no problem paying it. Why? Because you, you, you don't want to be in debt. You know what happens when you're in debt? You can't serve. Because debt takes precedent over serving because debt will consume you. When you have debt, you go to bed with it. You wake up with it. You can go to the bathroom in the night. Your debt will jump into your thoughts. I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and you rejoice when you find integrity there. God rejoices when he finds you trust in him there. That's when, God, it, it, that's when God gets the biggest glory when you don't see it, but he opened a way that you, did. you had no possibility of how it happened. You don't believe me? After the service, you can talk to Roger Penix. He'll tell you about some things that happened to him over the last several weeks that he had no idea, no inkling. And Roger, y'all know Roger cool. Roger cool. Roger called me with excitement. I knew something was up because he had this excitement. I was saying to myself, yeah, dog, uh-huh. And he said, boy, ask him for yourself. Ask him for yourself. Ask him for yourself. Because he, he could not see it, but he said, you know what? I, I, I know what I got. And I know what I should do, but I also know what I'm faced with. And what I'm facing with, it don't make sense to do what I got to do. I, it don't make sense to do that because I'm looking over here is what I, I need. To, so I need to shift it. And then all of a sudden he said, no, no, I'm a, you know what, Lord, I've been trusting you. Let me, let me trust you again. So he went on and trusted it. And then he got to a place that he was thinking going to cost him some money, got some money, came back with more money. You got to understand it's a willingness to give, understanding that it comes from your heart. If it's in your heart if it's implanted in your heart it can't be stopped 
If it's in your heart, we can't finagle it out of you. If it's in your heart, I ain't got to come up with no scheme to get it out. If it's in your heart and you see where it's going and you see what it's doing for you first, that's when you can go and tell somebody. But you can hold on to yours as long as you want. I, I, look, I told you, I got five kids that I've raised. One of my children gives all the time. The other ones, they know it. I, I, I even told my son, I said, boy, how long? I said, how long? How long? He said, dad, I almost got it figured out. I said, you can't figure it out, son. I'm your father. I'm 57 years old. I can't figure it out. I got to trust. But you go ahead on and almost figure it out. He tells me the plan, too. And in my mind, because you know you can't speak stuff in the atmosphere, because then they say, why are you being so negative? So in my mind, I keep my mouth shut, and I just say to him over and over again, son, you ain't even got to do all that figuring. Let me go on and wrap this thing up. I know, my God, that you examine our hearts. That's what the word of God says. And, you, and he rejoices. God rejoices in the integrity there. And you know I have done all these things. This is David talking. This is David talking. You know I've done all these things, and I have watched your people offer their gifts willingly and joyous, joyfully. Joy, he, he, that's, that's a proud parent moment when you see that your hard work has paid off and your example has been followed and you have stood fast in leading people in the right way and knowing that whatever happens, they got to trust in God and God is going to test you individually to see where your heart is. Y'all can't get there on what my heart is because my heart is fixed that I got to trust him because I'm telling you in day 90, I didn't even think we was going to get this far because I was thinking about what I could do, never paid attention what he could do. Amen. And so the people gave willingly. Give because you want to demonstrate what God means in your life. Give freely. Give because it's in your heart to give. Give because you are blessed to give. Give to glorify God. Lead by example. Lead by example. That's the title of the message. We got to lead by example. And people will, will support it because it will be of a willing nature, not forcefully. Let's look at verse 18. O oh Lord, the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. That's why we give, because it's instructions, and the instructions are for you to obey. How do you obey? You follow the instructions, and if you obey and follow the instructions, blessings flow. You got to stop trying to figure this thing out for yourself. You got to stop thinking that you're smarter than God. We can't be that smart. God is the greatest and the smartest of us all, so if he put it in his word, all we got to do is just be smart enough to trust it. I keep trying to tell you that if you want to be blessed, obey the instructions. The instructions come with blessings, but the problem is you fight against it because you got this idea that you can figure this thing out. You can't figure out abundance. All you can do is lay up in it and be thankful that it, the favor is falling fresh on you because of your willingness to do what? Give from your heart. And I guarantee you folks in the word of God, it can't come back void. So if you sow sparingly, then you're going to reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, it says you will reap bountifully. For God does what? He loves a cheerful giver. So you should be laughing every time you have the opportunity to give because you know that blessings are coming and favor is falling on you. And I guarantee you, you won't have to be that person standing out there with the sign, but you'll be the person that helped the person with the sign get rid of the sign because you understand the key is obey and follow the instructions god bless you and may heaven smile upon you listen you can you can you can study you can listen to every preacher on television. You can go to every church on the boulevard. Until you get in the book and follow the instructions, obey and connect your heart with trusting in God. 
you're just doing activities and some people do the activities because it makes them feel that they're closer because instead of being at the club I'm at church but it does not make a difference if what you are learning you're not applying it makes no difference is the example that you're setting nobody wants to follow don't fool yourself don't fool yourself don't fool yourself to think that you're more than we are all are tested I'm tested I'm tested I'm, I'm, I'm tested the anniversary is coming up that's a test that's a test that's an anniversary because I'm looking at I'm looking at what we have what has come in what has to go out for it to happen and I'm going Lord it, 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 it does not adding up right now and so so what, what's the first thing we do when something's not adding up we look to cut and I say well I can't tell my brother to trust God and then I cut So then I have to realize, okay, what are we doing? Okay, here's what we're doing. It's ministry. Ministry is needed. Ministry is needed. So, so decisions that I have made, I, you know what I said to myself? I, I had to question myself because when it got tight a couple of weeks ago, I had to question myself. I said, Lord, was I following you or was I in front of you? Because I have to be tested too. Because it's been a good ride for the last two years. Bro, it's been good. It's been good. I ain't had to think twice. Then all of a sudden, I found myself looking at numbers and I said, woo, I'm thinking twice. But we got to move forward. And you got to understand that if the leadership falters, the, the people falter. I'm telling you, I don't, listen, leadership starts in the home and it trickles out. And I, I'm telling you, I, 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 look, I... Yeah, all right. That's a whole nother sermon. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> I'm just telling you. One thing I told my wife when we got married, I said, look, there's an order that God has established. If you follow this order, it's, it's harmonious. If you rebel against it, it's problematic. So whenever you see problematic situations, you got to look at the order and go, this is out of order. A friend of mine is going through some things, right? Going through some things. And I told my friend, I said, that's because it's out of order. So my other friend jumped in and said, well, when you're married, we're a team. That's what they said. You are a team. When you're married, you are a team. But he's the head. And I need your help. I don't need you leading me. I need you supporting me. But that leader need to be leading by example. And if every time you lead, the, the, the water get turned off, and every time she lead, they got water, bro, you better check your leadership skills. I, I'm just telling you. And I said, I get it. Yeah, we are a team. But we are a team that I'm leading. David was leading. And the people supported the leadership because they saw the example. We have to be the example for somebody to follow. So the doors of the church are open. Here at Asaw Community Church, if you want to be a member, just fill out this card. Answer the two questions. That's it. That's it. That's it. Answer two questions. Why do you want to be a member of this church? Because you need to know. Because when you know, if you ever do multi-level marketing, the first thing they teach you is you got to define your why. If you can define your why, why you want to be a part of this business, that why propels you to success because you know, I want to get my mother out of this, this bad situation. I want to help do this. So I, that's my why. So, so, so when you know your why, it gives you the motivation to keep moving forward. And no matter what you face with, that why knocks down every barrier. So if you want to build your mother a house, you can't stop until you build that house. That's your why. So I always want to know why you want to be a member of the church. And then what ministry would you like to serve in? Because serving is how you grow. See, the reason why men don't grow is because they don't serve. Men don't grow by coming to a class. Men grow by fellowship. There's a guy in my neighborhood. We walk every Sunday morning now, and it's 645. I just met him. I met him on my walk, and we walk. And now we talk. And when we talk, we talk about stuff that strengthens the family. And then he shares some things. He said, man, I didn't know that. And this is a grown man. He said, I didn't know that. Now, back in the old days, I'd have said, what you mean you don't know that? But then I realized everybody didn't have the same lesson. Everybody didn't come from the same class. So I said, well, man, here's, here's how I perceive that. 
He said, man, you know, I think my daughters, they never get married. And I said, they ain't in my head. I ain't say it out publicly because of the way he set the level. No dude can meet that level. I said, you did too much. You did. You took them too high. And now they finicky about everything. Oh, I don't like He got a big baby toe. Just craziness. Just craziness. I'm just telling you. So anyway, you should have ministry. Um, September the 13th, we'll be back for our weekly Bible study, Tuesday Town Hall. It comes back after our anniversary. It'll be September 13th at 7 o'clock. Um, I don't know if, we're gonna, if I'm going to be here, if we're going to be online. I haven't decided yet because people like being online because you get to see everybody, you get to hear everybody. I like coming to the church because we pay for it. And if I don't do it, then I'm only here one week, one hour out of the week. So I'm trying to find other things to do to utilize the facility other than sitting here for 60 minutes on Saturday night. So that comes back September the 13th. When it comes to giving, you know, listen, since one of the things, remember, if you go back and look at some of the old sermons when I first started preaching, I didn't even know what to say about giving. I was always for a loss of words because I felt like, yo, he, he's your God, do what you do. And then I realized that's what people did, absolutely nothing because that's what they were doing. And so I called one of my pastor friends and I said, hey man, people are not giving. He said, teach them. And that's it. And so we began to teach giving and then people began to give and then we realized that we had to have ministry so we could utilize the gifts in ministry. So we began to help ministries and then we started to grow and then God started expanding our territory because he could trust us what we got, what, what, excuse me, what we received. I said, God, my wife would be correcting me in the car. Uh, you ain't got it. You received it. So anyway, so if you want to give, if God has moved it on your heart, if he's placed giving in your heart, then you can give. You can give online at asawcc.org. That's the best way to give. And the reason why this is the best way to give is because once you set it up, anytime you want to give, you can just log into your own account. At the end of the year, it's already accounted. I can send you out the giving statement in two minutes and you can get it because it is a tax write-off because we are 501c3 and you can write it off. And people say, well, I don't want to write off my giving. It's a blessing to God. Well, there's the thing called the law of the land and the law says you can do it. So as long as the law says you can do it, it's okay. So meaning if you get, if you make $100,000 and you give $25,000, you only have to pay taxes on 75000 That's the law. You can benefit from it. Most people, big rich people that wait to the end of the year, see what they're going to owe, and then that's when they start sending out donations at the end of the year. That's why ministries are blessed in December, because people are trying to get rid of that money, because if you don't get rid of it, you get taxed on it. So, if you want to write that check for $25,000, you can just go to asawcc.org. Because <laughs> we are 501c3. Or you can give in the envelopes here in the church and put it in the container at the end. And again, how did this come about? Because when we first started ASAR, we did what we were taught. We, you know, you walk around. And a lady came up to me and said, I felt really bad because I walked around and I had nothing to give. And so I said, well, don't worry about it. We're not going to do that no more. People know if they want to give, they can give, they'll give. So here's the containers. If you're here, you want to give. D, good to see you, my friend. Good to have you here. Good to have you here. Good to have the rest of y'all here. And it's good to have LaDonna read the welcome. This was a, it was a dynamic duel today. LaDonna and I, and Lord willing, everyone will be back next week as we celebrate our four year anniversary. With that being said, all minds are clear. Father God, we're so thankful for the word. We're thankful for the songs. We're thankful for the hearts of the people. We're thankful, Father, that we as a unit are growing stronger and that we are affecting the community day by day because of our heart to give and our willingness to serve. So we, thank, we are thankful, Father, for what you're doing in our lives. Bless us now as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.